Trevor, you're not at your desk. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Come on. I'm introducing you now. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> run, run, run. Oh, he's like, niggas out. Look at that. I'm coming. I'm alive. Is that because the cheetah was chasing you? Yeah, but he won't catch me. It's too quick. All right, okay. So we know the gazelle is in the house tonight. Say hello, Trevor. Good evening, everybody, and I hope you're looking forward to this latest podcast. Because I certainly am. I know what's coming. Yep, 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 yep. And to that man with all the facts, Mark, are the Conservatives going to lose in the next election? Of course. There you go. See, he's got all the facts. He's got the handle on it. right? And of course, everybody knows the most fabulous digital pub landlord is at the helm. So we're going to steer this ship tonight and we're going to make sure that everything is all right. So here we go. We're going to kick off with the roundup straight away. And now this is going to be, again, another extended roundup because there is so much silly season news going on. It just needs some clarification. So the first thing I'm going to pick up on is uh, one that I have a bone of contention about, and it's the post office, and they still haven't sorted it all out yet. Now listen to this. I mean, we all know what it was all about because literally the post office between 1999 and 2015, due to faults in Fujitsu's Horizon system, convicted almost 900 sub-postmasters of theft, fraud, and false accounting. And that has taken that long to get something sorted out, and it is now being revealed that the shamed post office boss, Paula Venels, she knew there was a covert operations team at Fujitsu that could alter the sub-postmasters' accounts remotely. And that's been revealed in phone calls. And they're still trying to protect Paul Venels. I mean, what well, the funny hell? You should mention that. It'd be funny you should mention that, Mr. Lennox, because my first ever computer, oh, going back years and years now, was a Fujitsu. Yeah. And I bought it from Toys R Us, believe it or believe it not. It was one of the big, uh, you know, the big built-up column ones with a whopping big screen on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an absolutely cracker it was. And I ended up with about four grand in my uh, building account. I don't know how. It was a good one. <laughs> well, how can you? How can you actually? How can anybody tolerate that? She knew. I know. I just I cannot get over it. And those people still have not received all their compensation yet from that time after it's all come to light. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And the solicitors are still. I say it again. They're still trying to protect her. And I just think it's wrong. I think they should just call it and just say, right, we know that it's wrong. And we should have dealt with it a lot earlier. And then we had people, ministers, like that Lib Dem, Ed Davey, him, waste of space. He didn't actually even acknowledge the complaint. He told them basically, you know, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to look at it. And he was got out by his, by his own people around him. I'm just thinking, it's, it gives a really, really poor view of justice in this country. Not that there is at the moment, but there isn't any justice at the moment. But it's poor. Stats, man? It was said in this article that somebody altered the figures of one of the branch accounts on a live terminal in the boiler room at Fujitsu headquarters. So... I'm thinking, was this just an error in the system or was there something more sinister going on? Yeah. Why would they be able to do this? Why was that so secretive? Yeah. This, this little group who could spy on people. So I, I don't know. Surely there'd be electronic evidence if someone was, was taking money. Yeah, yeah. There'd be a bank trail. Surely it would have been quite easy to work out. Um, this stinks, to be honest. Oh, the whole thing stinks. And why would you want to protect... Some ugly cow like that. I mean, have you seen a picture of her? Jesus, I've never seen... I've seen better-looking horses than that woman. I'm not kidding you. You're the new Lawrence Fox. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) I honestly don't care. I mean, how that woman got into that position, I do not know. I think you probably got an idea. What? What, she galloped into it? 
second. Hey, Paula, why the long face? <laughs> mm, not to put... Go on. As we mentioned, uh, sorry. So no, go on, Trev. Uh, uh, that's that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's going, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Go well, ahead, I speak. My, I had my hand up then, and you said, go on, when he was talking to Stats. As Stats said a while ago, I think about two or three podcasts ago, um, why did nobody pull up that all of a sudden a lot of people started to pinch money? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All together, all at the same time. Why did nobody say, hold on a minute, what's going on here? Which is a dead, obvious, simple question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, Would people it, all start stealing money at the same time? Nah. No. Nah. Wouldn't happen. No, nah, it wouldn't nah. happen. Especially when they weren't all linked and didn't know each other. Correct. Exactly. Just wouldn't somebody somewhere should have just put two and two together and got four. Oh, I dislike that woman intensely. They all knew. They all knew. And they put those people through hell. And two people died. And that's yeah. got to rest heavy on their conscience for all of them involved. I'm sick of them. Sick of them. And I'm sick of that well, kind of thinking. Rest heavy on their conscience. If she put any of the millions back yet, I doubt it. No. No. It won't no. happen. And she should no. just, she should have. All honours removed from her. Removed. Disgusting. Well, she, she has had them removed, actually. The, the, uh, the, was it an OBE, was it? Has it? Is that gone? I can't that's remember. That's gone, yeah. Oh, that's been taken back, that, yeah. Charlie, uh, Charlie went to get it himself. Wow. And he wasn't well. He went, oh, wait, see, I can get it. Well, I've OBE been too back. busy concentrating on the actual case itself and reading up about different things that have gone on. So, anyway. Yeah, the uh, honour's been taken off of, yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one, and this will make Statsman jump for joy. And this is from a YouGov poll. Now, you know that YouGov was started off by a Tory. How about that? So they're fearing that a general election catastrophe is going to come about because a new mega poll shows that they're on course for a worse defeat than in 1997. And they're saying that Labour are set to win more than 400 seats now. So this is like picking it up now more with Keir Starmer enjoying a 150 seat majority. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Is it stats? Come on, please put my mind at rest. I'm not sure it's going to be that big, but whatever it is, you know, it serves them right. Do you know what? It's it's come back from what they did during the Great Panic of 2020. I still yeah, can't forget yeah. what they did to people. And for the fact they've just destroyed this country with immigration. And they're just letting our culture just be whittled away and attacked left, right and centre. And all they ever do is side with the lefties. Good riddance. And whatever they get, good. You deserve it and probably worse. Yeah, I, I hope they go. But I don't think it's going to be how they're all making out. I'd love it to be, actually. I'd love them to get no seats for what they've done. Oh, they've and done. I will celebrate. So, they've done so much damage, so much damage, and people are really, really unhappy, really unhappy. But yeah, but they're still they're still doing the damage, aren't they? I was looking at something earlier on, and it's absolutely shot me. I, I can't remember where to put it now. But anyway, this um, they froze the the allowance, the tax allowance, the personal tax allowance. They froze that, yeah, and. They did this in 2021, and they've frozen it to 2028. Yeah. The 12,500 personal tax allowance is frozen till 2028. That's another four years. So any of the pensioners, this is getting more and more yeah. um, in my eye line, because when you get your pension, the pension already has gone to 11,500. Uh, uh, One more increase. I mean, you're already paying tax on your pension anyway. Yeah. And that's going to carry on till 2028. Well, they're going to be hoping that you're going to fall into that um, trap anyway because so they can claw back some of that money. They're just rip yeah, off you're, merchants. You're, you're already there. When have you ever known a policy to last for that length of time from 2021 to 2028? It'd be great if they could actually, you know, stop vehicle excise and duty for that long. I'll tell you. Well, there's a thousand things it can do, but... But again, I can't remember a policy that's been standing for that length of time. And, and you know, £12,500, it's not a lot of money. And they waste so much money as well. There's no two ways about it. And are Labour going to be any different? Oh, of course they are. Yeah, they'll probably drop it to 10500 <laughs> <laughs> Well, some of the comments there were, 
from Scranchi, the promised lower immigration, we have the highest immigration, both legal and illegal, in this country's history. They promised we would get our fishing waters back. Fishing industry declined by 70%. The promised lower NHS waiting lists, where are they? They're the highest at the moment they've ever been, and the NHS is on the verge of collapse. That's not to mention the excess and wasteful spending. They achieved what they told us Corbyn's labour would do. <laughs> so you can't argue with that, can you? They failed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brexit. Failed. 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 NHS. Failed. Immigrants. Failed. failed. Education. Failed. Failed. Everything. The economy. Failed. Well, here's another one for you. In a nice link, we seem as though you mentioned it. An academy trust has been warned, has warned one of its primary school teachers that they would be breaking the law if they told pupils a person cannot be trans and that children who were unhappy sharing changing rooms with trans classmates should be moved. How about that? What a tosh. Yeah, move to a proper school. Well, this is the Bath and Wells Multi Academy Trust, which runs 42 schools with over 8,000 pupils across Somerset. And that's what they told staff that denying a person could change their sex was likely to breach the Equality Act. Mark? And what age were they talking about here? Well, I think it's, it's primary school. Well, you can legally change your they call gender, but it's sex. So you haven't changed it, you've just changed it on legal documents when you're an adult. Sex is protected by the Equality Act, and so is belief, and that's the belief to believe on either side of the, the arguments, the insane arguments of, yeah, you can be whatever you want to be on whatever day, which is just bonkers. Well, that sex is immutable. They're in for a shock when the new guidance comes out, but then again, it's new guidance. No one ever follows it anyway, do they? They just do what they want. Well, what about these kids that are identifying as animals? Like, one of them <laughs> made me laugh. There was a comment <laughs> about it. That a father, his son, actually came back from school and he was just, I think it's like end end of year primary or beginning of secondary school. And the kid turned around and he said, I identify as a cat. It's all the rage. And nobody can do anything about it. So his dad they sat down to tea with the family, his little sister, and the kid said, where's my food? <laughs> and he turned around to you and he just said, it's in the bowl out in the kitchen. Now get away from the table, you dirty animal. Yeah, that's a surefire way to stop it. If they come home and say they identify as a dog, you say, right, well, you know where you're off to now then. Little doggy. <laughs> you have to have them testicles removed. Can't <laughs> no. keep them. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. That's the best calling. Me, little boy. Yeah, you what? I, 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 I've, I've been criticised many a time for being down with the kids. And I'm there, I'm with him, and I identify as a gazelle. So I can't see anything wrong with it whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've uh, identified as a gazelle for the last four years, so I think it's all, you know, of course I'm here, as you know. Well, to my wife and certain other women in this household, I identify as a brick wall. <laughs> da, da. That's a good one. <laughs> ah, and they're now talking to it. Yes, indeedy. I just think it's all wrong. It's stupid. I mean... Well, did he quote a specific law that you're breaking by doing this? No. No, I bet you he didn't. Or she, whoever it was. Or he, they. She, them, or it. they, them. Alphabet yeah. crew. <laughs> they should, they should um, what did our council say? They should lawyer up and this put is, their... Uh, that's right, that. they should be challenged. It's their <laughs> policy. It's their, ah, policy. their policy. It's not the law, it's their policy. It's their policy. It was That's actually, when we were discussing that there, there is what was known as a pregnant pause, but you can't mention that these <laughs> days. <laughs> now the left will want to abort that like about a week before it's born. A birth parent. Oh, anyway. That's the term, a birth parent. Were you a birth parent, Mark? Nope. <laughs> I wasn't. I was a dad. Yeah, definitely. I Father. was a dad. Hmm. But I can remember my daughters once saying to me, Dad, are you really my dad? And I went, no, your dad is delivering milk in South Wales. Yes. <laughs> so when they started to get a little bit cheeky in their teenage years, I said, no, you're not going out. You've got to be there. And they said, you're not my dad. <laughs> I'm good. We're going to do what we want. <laughs> so I just went, oh, right. okay, go ahead. Go ahead. How are you getting a lift then? Yeah. 
Yeah. So you're back to being dad again. Yeah. And a milk float, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a milk float. <laughs> right, okay, here's the next one. Outrage as newly elected MP George Galloway. Now, this is going to get stats, man. He's going to get he's going to get really really mad about this. He interviews an extremist and this extremist was urging people to join up with terrorists fighting Israel on Iranian propaganda channel. Yes. What do you think about that, Mark? Well, it wasn't so long ago we warned about this and here we are. So according to someone called Anthony Gleese, who's an expert on terrorism and professor, bear with me, emeritus at the University of Buckingham they said that these comments appear to breach UK terrorism laws. Now, I can say they definitely fit the definition of extremism we discussed the other week. So the new definition was extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence. Okay, check. George intentionally created the permissive environment for others to achieve the results. Check. He enabled the spread of extremism. We'll check that one. He actually provided an uncritical platform to his guest who attempted to radicalise, indoctrinate and recruit others. And just for clarity, that guest... Violence, check. Well, just, one. <laughs> hold that thought. Just for hold clarity, it. the guest was a Lebanese activist and commentator, Dr. Marwa Osman. I was coming to that, yeah. Okay, sorry, go ahead. It's all right. And then, I bet, if asked, he would refuse to rescind, repudiate or distance himself from that behaviour. Don't think he has so far. No. So the, the group that it was, that Dr. Osman was discussing actually had their prescription extended. They were prescribed, got a little bit longer, in November 21. And this is the clincher. So she was speaking from her home in Lebanon and on film, on the mantelpiece. There was a small sign in Arabic, and it said, God is great, death to America, death to Israel, curse upon the Jews, and victory to Islam. I wonder where that all comes from. So if this uh, well, is case what, of extremism, I, Trevor, then I don't know what is. Well, yeah, we'll sorry, man, but I've said this. Door. Probably not. I said this when they were earning all that money in the 70s. Them Osmonds, they've been, <laughs> and the, they've reformed again now. And I said at the time, they're earning money for criminal activity. <laughs> Trevor, it is not the Osmonds. He said Osmond. No, no, he's, he's, no, 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 it's not them. Crazy horses. Wah, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's obviously the elder that's brother. That's how old I am. It's not Donny. Obviously, Donny wouldn't do that because he's still in show business. But that's the older brother, that. And they call Oh, well, this was a, a female. Love. Oh, female. That's Marie, then. Uh, she lived on the other side of the mountain, didn't she? I remember that one. Yeah, this female who follows all this Islamic scripture to the letter, apart from she wasn't covering her whole face or her hands or any of that stuff it says in the Quran, so never mind. But I'm just wondering why she doesn't go and join these groups herself. Why is she on telly asking other people to do it? She's scared. Well, that fella, Anthony Glees, was that who you talked about, yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's actually called for George to be removed as an MP. I agree. If he's not going to uphold British laws... If he can't abide by them, then Galloway should not be an MP. That's what he's saying. Well, the actual launch of Galloway's campaign in Rossdale, did you see that on the TV? Well, no, you didn't see it on the TV. You'd have seen it alternative channels yeah. where he was surrounded by, what, a room full of Muslim people and they were all singing and chanting and yeah. Galloway was chanting it from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. And he was chanting it and chanting it. And chanting. I thought that was illegal in this country. And yeah. he was launching his campaign on that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's wrong. It's wrong. No we police, all know it. No arrests. No nothing. No, they're all too busy. I don't know who they picking on this week. All the ULAS protesters. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead. Now. They've shown that the police can be robust. It just depends who's on the streets protesting, really, doesn't it? Well, did you hear some of them shouting out? That guy, one of the protesters on that, he was shouting out and saying, yeah, where were you when my house got burgled? Nobody. Zero turned up. No one. But because they were protesting in a street that was literally close to Sadiq Khan's house, all these police came out, and I mean, there were tons of them. Didn't see that. The Met, Met Police were, were a outside. joke. Sorry, John, yeah, when they were outside, Conservative MPs houses, no one gave a damn. No. When they were outside Parliament, they just left them there. Correct. Funny, isn't it? It's like they want this all to happen in a way, I think. 
Oh, they, they, they totally and utterly get on my nerves. And here's something else that gets on my nerves. The Royal Navy spends $2.4 million on diversity and inclusion team. And Grant Shapps is blowing his top off. He is absolutely sick of it. How about that? Well, we all know about the Navy, don't we? So I, can't, I don't the know Navy. why they need to yeah. I don't know why they spend that much on it. Yeah, you <laughs> can feel the man in the Navy. Quid. Sorry. <laughs> they only need to spend about 15 quid, don't they? You're already, uh, they're already that way inclined, I believe. Yeah. So rumour has it. Not that I'm pointing any fingers. Not that I would. And where are you pointing those fingers? <laughs> That's what no, we no want to know. Money. No poking now. No poking. No poking. On a first date. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Another reason why recruitment's dropping, I think. Um, why are our Navy so busy protecting shipping lanes halfway across the world and doing all this woke nonsense, but not protecting our own waters and our own border? Yep. Is that the actual purpose we probably set out to do in the first place? Well, we've got the RNLI to protect our waters, haven't we? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I mean properly protect them. <laughs> No, by stopping people from entering your country on mass. Well, like the Ru- the Russians do. I mean, after that after that one terrorist attack that they've just had recently, he rounded them all up. <laughs> all of these um, Muslims, he just rounded them up and said, "You're out. Boom, go, get them out." That's one of the benefits of having a dictator. You just make a decision, and everybody says, "Yeah, but don't you think that's so and so?" And they go, "Okay, do you want to go with them?" Now get out. I like exactly. that. Yeah, it's funny the way some of these Middle East countries and the actual Muslim countries deal with the extremism better than far better than we do. Because it doesn't oh, really we're there, we're there to country. protect every guy. I mean, that Azidi guy. How many chances did he have? Have you seen the list? Another one on the run, haven't we? At the minute, he's just stabbed a, a lady in Bradford. Isn't oh yeah, a, yeah. A woman walking along with a baby in a pram. He's just killed her. Yeah, he's got. He's apparently he's got links around around this area. Wow, has it? He, look, he, he looks like he does as well, yeah. Well, I tell you... links in every area, haven't they? And yet, you know, they're so good at defending the offender and the offended don't get anything. It seems to be sort of the norm in this country now. Wait till Labour get in. Oh, my God. I think we need a name. It's, it's not quite Stockholm Syndrome, is it? Because they've not been taken hostage yet. But why are these people drawn towards the people we need to be really getting rid of? No and idea. Terrorists and rapists and they're stopping them from being deported. What? I'd just love to know what goes on in these people's broken brains. There's oh, a massive nuts. agenda. There's an agenda. They're, they're trying to absolutely break down the culture and structure of this country. It, it's it, obvious. Where's the money coming from, though? I, my guess is it's Iranian banks because there's still two Iranian banks in this country allowed to operate. And I think that the money has been distributed from there. That's my opinion. Because where do they get the money for all these flags and all these things to fund everything that's going on? It annoys the hell out of me because people are not actually doing anything about it. I, I, I think it annoys me so much, I'm going to make a complaint to Police Scotland. <laughs> no, one complaint a minute being made under shambolic Scots hate law as almost 8,000 complaints leave police swamped. <laughs> this, this is how we fight back now. Yeah. You've got to use their own ridiculous laws against them. Yeah, well, that's a good point, that Matt. They're saying good that the point. control room officers are battling to keep on top of the backlog, equivalent to one grievance every minute. <laughs> I bet you 7,999 of them are against... <laughs> Hums are useless. So stirring up hatred is now prohibited, and police are braced for thousands more cases following <laughs> the football match between Celtic and Rangers. <laughs> I wonder what our Scottish people are going to say about that. I, in fact, I'm going to get them on soon because I want them to comment on a case that's going on at the moment between Biffa and the SNP government. Does anybody remember, I mean, I'll come back to this about the hate crime, but does anybody remember uh, the green woman, Lorna, Lorna Slater, I think it is? The Greens and the SNP are together on most things. And they had a policy for deposit returns and, you know, the bottles. Yeah? Oh, and, yeah. You know, 
and post back then. Yeah, they dumped the policy, but Biffa had actually paid a lot of money out to get everything ready because they were assured that the policy was going to go ahead. So the, the refuse company did a lot of infrastructure and they spent a lot. So now they're actually going to sue. They're going to sue the SNP for nearly $100 million. And they, they mean business. How about that? Well, that's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> rubbish for who? <laughs> but, but Well, no. I, it, it, it's a rubbish some, company. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Go on, Mark. Just going back to the what we were talking about a minute. Oh, yeah, I'm just sorry, I diversified we, we, it, no, because okay. I'm paying ourselves for this podcast for diversity. Oh, I am so now sales. our diversity, inclusion, and equality spokesman. Trevor, shut up. <laughs> no, but I now call it. I, I now um, identify as a, a a footstool, commonly known as a poof. <laughs> it's a poof. It's a poof. It's a poof. It's a poof. Sorry, poof. Go ahead, no, Mark. Go on. The point was, right, so we've started off now by making emotions criminal, so you've you've obviously got hate. I'm just wondering which one's next. Should we pick some? How about pride? Yeah. i get rid of that one first. Well, why, why is it just hate? Why don't we just get rid of joy as well? Yeah. We'll just live in a miserable world. 1984, baby. Good. If anyone's sad, that's it. You're off. That's a crime. You're gone. I reckon we could just go through the whole list. There's quite a few of them. If you breathe, that's a crime. Don't breathe. Yeah. Amusement. Let's just get rid of all the good ones and happiness. Definitely pride to get rid of that. Well, I mm. think J.K. Rowling is really doing a great job. Go on, Mark. I know we just We'll just leave confusion because that's where all this is going to end up, isn't it? Indeed, indeed. It's just ridiculous. I hate crimes. Hate crimes. I mean, it's madness. It's gonna, it's gonna kill his government. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. And the police. What are they going to investigate now? If they're too busy investigating this because they can't cope with it, what about real crimes? Don't forget real crimes. They're too That's hard to solve. Crime's gone, aren't it? Yeah. Forget that. No, so if it's too hard to solve a real crime, it's much easier for someone to go to the police and go, "I think he did it because he hates me." Oh, in that case, easy crime done, problem solved. You're under arrest, charge done. Well, I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to get some SAI badged heavies. Right? And I'm going to say, there's the bad guy. Get him. And we make a citizen's arrest. And well, let's I'll see what the what, police when do it comes then. Into England, we're snookered. Why? Because of the raven. He hates us all. <laughs> so what will. Has <laughs> anyone fed him yet? <laughs> no, no. He's been here this week. Weeks. I'm well, not fed in this week of you, John. It's dying. You can hear the noise dying in the oubliette of Cheshire uh-huh. Matters Digital Pub okay. Basin. They're gone. Okay. So once the once the noise goes, that's it. You know, we just forget all about them. You know what I mean? Uh, I heard him flapping at the end of the other night, but that's the last I heard of him. Yeah. No, no, I no. Ran out, I ran out of seeds last week, so I fed them for a week or so. Yeah, well, they'd be all right. Well, that's yeah, it. It's going to abuse. It's going to him for a month, didn't it? It's going to be abused, isn't it? That hate law. You know, it's madness. Absolute madness. And I don't think it's going to work out for anybody. And quite simply, <laughs> how is it going to work out? It seems like it's not working, but I think we're going to do a little podcast on this to see how it is coming along. Yeah, we'll, in, we'll in revisit future. it because oh, yeah. it can't be enforced and the interpretation of it is not going to be equal and fair. So somebody's going to make a decision. So it's going to be utilised as a weapon, you know, for certain things. It will. Because you look, they've tried to go after um, J.K. Rowling. They're not interested. So it's going to be used for the low-hanging fruit, isn't it? Whoever the authorities want to pick off, whoever's speaking out against them. We know how this works. In fact, we said how it'd work on our other podcast on it. So we'll come back and see if we were right. (laughs) See what happens. Yeah. Not a lot. I can't see. If you think about it, you've got to actually bring Sturgeon into this as well because after Biffa taking them for 100 mil, it makes Sturgeon's missing money from the SMP, like 600 grand, look tiny. You know, so he's got, this guy's got so many problems and he's promising money for other countries. Our money for other countries. Who is? Useless? Yeah, he is. He is. There's no two ways about it. He's not going to be there for another 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> As soon as, soon as the SMP, the, the, you get the general election, they're gone. Yeah. 
right? And here's the last story, and this is going to interest you from the roundup. This is going to interest you, Trevor the Gazelle. All right, yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Reform go on. drops two of its election candidates and suspends a third for a series of offensive remarks, including obscene brown baby's jibe. What's all that about? Come on, spill the beans. Oh, oh wait a minute, yeah, DEI, so, shut up. Okay, yeah, speak now. So, so basically, the, where this is what? So you, you get in. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy over the leader about this. Actually. And I'm telling you now, this is not equality because he hasn't said anything about it's supposedly an allegation about brown babies jibe but what about yellow babies what about asian kids what, what about, about jelly babies <laughs> go ahead no i mean there's been a lot of criticism aimed at the leader richard tice over this because oh. apparently what he seems to be doing is allowing these groups like hope not hate and there's, there's actually a barrister in in London, an Asian lady is going through all the candidates as regards myself. They, she's going through all the candidate social medias. And then, well, hang on a minute. I thought the leader would deal with this. Not hope, not hate. Not an Asian barrister in London. I thought it was down to, to the party to uh, basically vet these people. This not, guy. Not organizations. Outside. Yeah, outside. I mean, he's bending, he's bending. All right, one of those candidates who's uh, been refused, it's alleged that he shared sexist remarks, such as calling Labour from Trump bencher Angela Rayner a slag and a trollop. I, I haven't well, heard that word in such a long time. Well, did she not call the Tory party a bunch of scum? Yep. Well, what happened to her? <laughs> I haven't actually heard that comment, Jonathan, that you've just come out with. Well, that's the allegation, that. and it is in the Daily Mail. Because he called her a slag, that's why and he's a trob- going to And it. a trollop. And a trollop. Well, okay. So, so he, gets, he gets expelled for that then? Yep. So she can say what she wants within the Labour Party, and that's fine. And yeah. one of them, uh, a mechanical engineer... I'm not sure. I think it's Amodio Amato. I think it's him. And he was calling Hamza Youssef a Hamas terrorist supporter and also shared the theory that Michelle Obama is a transvestite. I mean, what the hell? Really? I mean, I'm sorry, but there's some videos on, on circulating that suggest, I'm not saying she is, but there's something down there. Our women don't have in the trousers bouncing around, so if someone could explain what that was, it might kill the conspiracy theory, might not Yeah, you show me yours, and I'll show you mine. Look, it's just people making but observations. But don't laugh when I show you mine. Well, I suppose, it, all right, yeah, they're making observations, but if they're in certain positions, I suppose, like a PPC, like, obviously, I can't really comment on this. <laughs> because somebody would probably either report me to Hamas Husses, or whatever his name is, for a hate crime. Oh, you know, I mean, where do we go from here? Am I not allowed to say anything or am I not allowed to say, well, certainly not, you know. All right, maybe they should have thought about what they said, but, I mean, did they say that a long time ago? Did they say that before yeah. they were selected as a PPC? Were they not vetted properly? I don't well, know. Well, know here's one of that. the comments from Cat. Cat 5742 wouldn't it have been far more sensible to check out wannabe candidates before accepting them as party candidates? Well, there you go, then. I don't know whether they'd said that before or whether they've said that since they were actually PPCs. And if they've the... said it as they were PPCs, then maybe they've got something to answer. A lot of the evidence I've seen, though, it was a lot of this stuff they've gone back through Twitter over the years. It's what they do. It's what the left do. They bring something oh. up ten years ago, and they go on about it for the next ten years. Well, here's yeah. another thing because they want to kill. They want to kill reform. They want to kill it. I mean, here's here's a comment that was made. It's Why focus on reform when we have a sitting conservative MP who sends intimate photos of himself to a stranger and then gives the stranger details of his colleagues so that they can be contacted. Well. How about that? You, you can go on. You can go on about you know a thousand things, can't you? That are that 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 are hypocritical to what we're on about. But the thing is, it, it's got to be down to the party leader to make his own mind up on, on which way he wants to go on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, I, I said to a lot of people, when I, when I joined Reform, I think there were about 4 or 5% in the polls. And then it went 6, 8, 10, 12, as we know, and now they're up to 16. And with UKIP, with UKIP, it was a very, very... Because UKIP was so successful in what they did, they were hammered from every angle by the establishment. Yeah. And I said to people when I first joined Reform, please get ready for what you're about to receive. I've yeah. said this when I went to the meetings, when I spoke to people. Because you're not going to be grateful. But, but when I spoke to people personally, the, the, the different candidates are just, at the moment, it's okay. But when you start getting to, once you hit that magical 12%, 14%, the establishment will absolutely come down like a ton of bricks because they get nervous. Well, well, what's happening now? I mean, look, look at. I mean, I, I can't, I can't ever remember UKIP being this close to, to another the second, the second party in the country. But reform now, they're only four points in, yep. in 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 your average polls. They're only four points behind the Conservatives. Yeah, and this is what's happening now. And you're not telling me that the Conservatives are not behind these. All of a sudden, when you got this barrister... Oh, box, the Dirty Tricks campaign is already you underway. Got the thing is, you know, of course they're behind it. And this is, and It'll be coming from both Conservative and Labour, because I they'll be feeding it through. Of course, yeah. I said to him, the people directly, people that have not stood before, and I just said, just watch out, because when they start getting to 14 and 15 and 16 percent, they will be trawling your media... And they will be trolling any area that you cover yep. because they will do anything to destroy reform you. Any competition. And you'll be a far right fascist, you'll be everything. Bit like and the that's Raven. What do. Bit like the Raven. Bit like the Raven. <laughs> and that's why he's uh, as you know, he's 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 got it, missing. He's in the oubliette. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, and it'll be your enemy's enemy. They'll both be working together. They're not gonna let this two party system slip without a vote. No, no, no. It's so, the same when you get so around 300,000 followers on any social media. They, they yep. start shutting you down because yep. they know you've got a voice then. Yep. We, we've predicted this. We said it was going to happen, and whoa, look what's happened. And here we are. Yeah. Well, you know what the score is. We've gone on a little bit too long, so we're going to cut it there. In case, unless anybody has got anything desperate that they want to comment on anything like I have actually. I have actually. All right, hurry up. No equality missing, here. Get on with it. What? What we've missed here is uh, the total eclipse of the sun. What, the paper? No, what's that in nice. a minute? You, you can only view it across America, but we've got this once in, in probably one and a half lifetimes. So you can view it in America, and we will be viewing it later on, um, obviously on the news and all that. It's a total eclipse of the sun where the moon becomes in between the earth and the sun, and it gets, you get a complete blackout in the middle of the day. Is now, everything going to shut down? I, Are we not going to be able to buy Coca-Cola? No, 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 no. I've been studying this. I've been looking at this for the last two to three days. There are now, alternative actually, refreshing drinks you can buy as well. This actually, it's allowing aliens, right? Listen to this. You've got to follow this carefully. This is allowing aliens. A lot of people don't understand this, but it's what? allowing aliens to approach the earth unseen. Are you talking about when the Mexicans it, coming over the border? Yeah, when it blacks out, you get, the aliens are going to start approaching the earth and you're not going to see him but it didn't work it didn't work because the labor party they're already onto it and they're on the way to visit them uh to give them their postal votes <laughs> <laughs> so, this is gonna be the longest eclipse in history i've not seen the sun since about last september september it's been freezing <laughs> cold and horrible isn't it Yo, oh, you're a vitamin d will be down go on stats uh, you got any shout outs, shout downs, or anything else you want to say before we finish? Um, well, what are the three shortest words in the English language? Given. Is it in? <laughs> is it Sorry. in? It is actually in it. Is it yeah, in? I think so. And I was also speaking to my neighbour. He's been mad at his wife for sunbathing nude. Personally, I'm on the fence. <laughs> Yeah, like that, like that. Uh, go oh, on. They were the cleanest ones I could tell. <laughs> go on, Gazelle. Yeah, I mean, it's actually, it's funny because my neighbour, I've been talking to my neighbours, right, and uh, she actually suggested that I put uh, cow manure on my strawberries. So anyway, I tried it, but nah, I'm going back to whipped cream. <laughs> Awful. 
<laughs> right. Anyway, the mother-in-law's been down in a week. She came down for a dinner, and she said, why is that dog staring at me? I said, because you're using his plate. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, thank God that's all over. Thank God. I'm absolutely Go fed up with everything that's going on. And there are things going on around here. We've got a PCC election in Cheshire uh, with our friend John Dwyer. I don't know the other guy. And we have a local by-election in Wolverham. And I don't know if any of those people are from the ward. So that'll be uh, something interesting. I can guarantee one of them is. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, but anyway. I've heard a rumour, and I've never heard... I've never heard before a candidate called Mr. Landlord. <laughs> uh God. But don't forget, we've got to vote for Jonathan Starker in the Wolverhams by-election. There you go. He's let the cat out of the bag. That's hey. it. To be held on the 2nd of May. Get out early. Take your passports with you because it's all photo ID. Yep. Do your best to get rid of the rest. Well, I'm going to get I'm going to get to all those guys on the dinghy in the Mersey. Well, all those women that are coming in that Mars showed me. <laughs> I say, yep. Yeah. Registered for vote? Come on. You know it makes sense. Get somebody in your corner. Here we go. All right, well, that's it. Yep. Good night. Don't forget, if you register vote, you need a vote. <laughs> <laughs>